Good morning, everyone. Today we'll be going over a check wear with a belt width of six plus inches. So on the agenda for today, we'll, uh, we'll go over where to find this on Sigma's website, uh, the definition of a belt check wear, type of reject systems, upstream and downstream equipment, uh, favor manufacturers, benefits and features, industries used in, and questions and key points when talking to customers. So, so where to find on Sigma's website, you'll go to buy our, hover over buy our equipment, go to processing equipment, and then from there you'll see a category of product inspection, and then you'll see a subcategory of check wear belt, and then another category of six plus inches belt check wear. So, so the category definition for a belt check wear is six plus inches is uh, the, belt, the belt width is wider than six inches, so it's typically used for a larger product. Uh, the check wear, um, check wear weighs every product in motion. It classifies, counts, and rejects products that are unfit. Uh, the product is conveyed over a scale, and if the product weighs too much or too little, it's ultimately rejected. So here's a different type of reject systems. As you can see in the image in the right, at the top right corner, um, you have your in fee conveyor and then the weighing conveyor, which ultimately just weighs the product. And then your out fee conveyor is where the discharge or the uh, reject system will be located. So the reject system on a check wear redirects the unfit product that weighs too little or too much. Um, so here's a, a few different options of rejects we have. You'll see your flipper reject, and the arms are ideal for thick products and bag products, it's essentially like a pinball machine. Just flips the product into your, uh, into your reject bin. Um, then you have your air, air reject, which is ideal for smaller products, kind of think of like a bag of fruit snacks or something. The air just, a gust of air just blows it into the reject bin. Then you have your drop, drop belt reject, where the product is dropped off a of movable belt. It's ideal for un, unpackaged, sticky products. And then your push arm reject is one of the more common ones. It's ideal for your heavier products where it just has a pneumatic arm that just pushes the product into the reject bin. So, so for upstream and downstream equipment, typically these are found towards the end of a production line, but you know, you could be, they could, it could be used after a filler or something to make sure the product weight is accurate prior to packaging. So, um, so then, so we have your filler, vertical form field seal, conveyor systems and cartners, and then downstream, you could have a metal detector, labeler, case erector, case sealer, stretch wrapper. So. So in this particular line, we have a canning line. So uh, here you can see the check wear is located there at the end, the very, very end of the line after the case packer. So the product is actually put in the case and then check weighed. But I mean, you know, if, if you're talking to a customer about this, it could potentially be after this filler here or after the, after the seaming system, you know, right before the x-ray tunnel, you know, so just to inspect it and just to kick off that one can instead of the whole package. So, and when you're talking to your customer, you could talk to them about, you know, how are you detecting the metal in this product before you're, uh, before you're uh, check weighing it or what are you doing after, so. Welcome to Sigma Equipment. Today's cycle test includes an Alpha EW8 three belt check wear. It runs from left to right and has a pneumatic cylinder push reject. This particular machine is operating on a 110 volt system, one phase, with air requirements set to 80 PSI. It is capable of running package speeds up to 120 per minute with weights ranging from zero to five pounds. This specific machine is set to a target weight of 518 grams. The operator sets the target weight, followed by the upper allowable weight and the lower allowable weight. First, product is placed on the infeed conveyor. The product moves over the load cell where it is weighed. When the product passes through the beam from the photo eye, the unit knows when to start looking for the weight to cross the load cell. The package length and speed of the conveyor is part of the load cell calculations. If the weight meets the requirements set by the operator, the product will move off the conveyor and onto the next process. If the product does not meet the weight requirements, a pneumatic arm will push the product off the conveyor and into a reject container. To learn more about this check weigher and other equipment, please visit us at sigmaequipment.com. Here is another video, and this will have the flipper arm reject system. So, the CW220, like all of our check weighers, is a robust and reliable check weighing machine. Combining a dual reject system and intelligent software, our check weighers are designed from the ground up for speed, accuracy, and reliability. Each model is offered with either an air or arm reject system that can be configured to work in conjunction with an existing metal detector. 
our intelligent reject system sorts overweight packages from underweight packages into the respective bins provided. This gives you vital information about how your line is running overall. We have a variety of models available to suit different pack sizes and weights, and all are available with an additional metal detector to work as a combination unit if required. All of our checkways give you the speed, accuracy, and control required for today's tight regulations. Make sure All right, so we're on to the load cell now. So load cells is the most important part of this thing, this uh, piece of equipment. So the load cells, uh, they convert weight into force and electrical signals that can actuate the measuring function. Uh, the length of the load cell will affect the, uh, or, or does impact the max product length and, um, and product spacing required. So it's good to know and it's good to talk to your customer about the, the load cell conveyor must be 1.5 times the product length. Um, so this gives you know the product enough time before that next product comes in to, uh, to be weighed. So, and then another thing to, to note is the load cell conveyor should be removed for transport. And as you'll see in this video done by our very own uh, Tom Witte, so. Hi, welcome to Sigma Equipment. Today, we're gonna to talk about check wares and how to take weight off the load cell for shipping. So on check wares, they typically have this conveyor that sits right over the load cell. And when this is in transit, this will bounce around and it might damage that load cell in there. So we're just, uh, typically these just have these little bolts right here. We're just gonna undo those. So the, this motor down here uh, is connected by the wire. So it's just a quick release. Once you have all the things disconnected, we can take this conveyor piece off the load cell. Nice and easy. I like to turn them upside down, protect this motor so it's not sitting weird. After we take this off, we're gonna flip this upside down, put it on top of here, and then we'll put a strap around this and then it'll be ready to ship. So common manufacturers we'll see is Metler Toledo, Loma, and Ishida. So industries use in, so these check are virtually used in every industry, but uh, so any product that you'll see packaged, I mean, it's, it's majority of the time it's gonna be check -way. So uh, they're more prevalent in the food industry just because you know, food products are based are based solely on weight. So, um, so you'll see in food and beverage, pharmaceuticals, chemical, and automotive. So, uh, so the check wear belt uh, check wear belt benefits. You know, they do they deliver a consistent quality product, and it's essential to protect your brand and your bottom line. Knowing every package is is weighed and uh, it's not overweight or underweight. So can meet the regulations because um, check weighing can allow the packaging manufacturer to eliminate legal problems in consumer consumption underweight packages. So um, reduce product giveaway. So this is very important too. You know, you don't want to give away free product. If it's your product's overweight, you're essentially just giving away free product. So, and that can be a loss of revenue. And in this case study, so a mushroom grower, he actually implemented a check wear into his production facility. And by reducing overpacking with the check wear, he was able to increase productivity by 5,000 pounds a day and then save $39,600 over the course of a year. So that just goes to show, you know, if you're, you're giving away all that free product, you can save a lot of free, a lot of money just by not doing that. So uh, for purchasing, you know, you wanna know what's the product last ran, what's the weight range, belt dimensions, what's your speeds, and uh, what's the product flow? Is it left to right, right to left? Um, for sales, you know, you wanna know what products will they be running? Um, check, and then you know, let them know that the check wear must be calibrated to their specific product. Um, we have a shop here that can help them out with that. So, um, so the type of environment we'll be going into, like I said, these load cells are very, very sensitive. So anything can affect that. The vibrating of the floor can, check the, uh, can affect the weighing. Even dust can affect the weighing on these things. So anything, it's just, you just have to know what type of environment's going into. Um, what's your product size and weight? Uh, what type of reject will they need? Um, what speeds? and uh, how will the product lay on the load cell. You know, like I mentioned, the product is, the load cell belt must be 1.5 times the length of the product. So will it be standing straight up? Will it be laying flat? You know, it's just a good question to ask. Um, here is an equipment listing that we have. It is a brand new Loma. Um, this is a, has a production output rate of up to 40 packages per minute. Um, the package weight can go from 25 to 6,000 grams. 
Um, and then we have the pusher arm for the reject into the reject bin. So, and then uh, for this equipment listing, we have an all fill. Um, so it can go up to 250 packages per minute. The weight range is up to eight pounds. Um, and it has a pneumatic push arm reject. So, so to go over today, you know, we went over a check where it, just, it essentially just takes your product and weighs every product in motion, and it rejects the product that weighs too much or too little. Uh, the load cells on the check wear are very, very sensitive, and that's something to, to note always. So just make sure you take take off the load cell conveyor whenever you're shipping it. Acquisition is a good thing to talk to your customers. I'm sure logistics does. So, um, and the load cell, uh, the load cell conveyor must be 1.5 times the length of your product. So, awesome. Any questions or comments?